Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video dealing with Revelation, the 20th chapter in a 1000 year period. As you can see here, the priest Tazama. All right, his YouTube page, Soldier of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai. All right, um, the title of the video he did. All right, response Elder Lahab goes off concerning the 1000 year period, and he's responding to a video done by the Elder Apostle Gabar. All right, Daily Edification 4. Once Esau goes down, all right, he is never going to come back up to rule again, which is true. All right, and he was responding to a video done, all right, by the elder Apostle Tahar on Elder Lahab going off. Now, Elder Lahab goes back to the old school. I've heard stories of him. I've seen him. And uh, when we, you know, uh, woke up in 2007 in what is known as the Great Awakening, um, he was nowhere to be found. All right. Um, you had Bishop Nate. All right, and he was calling on the name back then when I first came in. Um, uh, Rahab, G-O-C-C, -C, and a few other Israelites, you know, loading videos here and there. Of course, you had the apostles, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. They weren't called Great Millstone at that time. But uh, once they started loading up videos, man, it spread like wildfire. And a lot of these guys... Who are now trying to you know jump back in the game we're nowhere to be found all right so they see the fruits all right of the works of the apostles all right and, and elders and bishops and men that stood stiffly and didn't stop and constantly uh preach the word they see the fruits all right and now they want to jump back in as if they never went anywhere you have a lot of men that do that all right and they pervert the gospel, all right, because he's teaching, you know, heathen can actually partake in the covenant, hell, amongst other garbage, all right. But um, I just want to jump into it, um, starting here at Revelation 20. Now, as we tell you all, when you read the book of Revelation, okay, you must understand that it jumps in and out of time periods, and that's done the spirit all right because the only ones who are going to have all right the um, understanding of how to break down a new song are the elect and the lord is going to give all right the um, members of the elect ears to hear and eyes to see the right message the new song being sung in its perfection which is the doctrine the gospel okay because if you read a lot of the book of revelation just on face value It'll confuse you. It's a stumbling block. Okay, the the understanding is given unto the uh, the lowly, and in these times, starting with the apostles and elders, all right, um, on down to the bishops and the uh, up and coming elders, you know, um, as well as you know other camps who don't even go under the banner of Great Millstone, but they teach the truth of the gospel. All right, the understanding is being brought out now. Um, when you read Revelation 20, it's a book of history. Remember, when you read Revelation 1 and 1, all right, Yahweh Shai, well, the Most High God, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, through an angel, opened up John the Revelator, many visions of things that were going to come to pass in the future, all right? From the point he received the visions until now, all right, even into the, the future, which is the end of Babylon the Great, he saw it all. So we'll start at verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Now, a lot of people bug out. Okay, now that angel is Yahweh Shai, and the key is what? Let's look up the, 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 the uh, Greek word for the term key, all right, because every empire that ever ruled on the planet earth okay it was through the most high god yahweh through yahweh shai that allowed it 
and the angels work on the minds of particular rulers on earth to do things for their empires to flourish, to start wars, to end them. All right. And start other empires. It's all done through the inspiration of Yahweh Bashim Shai and the holy angels. OK, to um, do these things. So that word in the Greek is Kleis. A key. All right. It says since the keeper of the keys has the power to open and to shut metaphorically in the New Testament to denote power and authority of various kinds. So this key. All right. Which is um, ultimately uh, Yahweh Shai has this key. He can open up power to one nation. He can take down another nation. All for the purpose of biblical prophecy. So what's happening here on the planet Earth. All right. Because uh, who was ruling at this time? All right. The Roman Empire, in particular, the Western Roman Empire. All right. So this great angel, which is ultimately Yahweh Shai, is on the earth okay shutting down one nation all right and he's going to raise up another for the purpose of prophecy and the great chain in his hand let's read it again and i saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand now a lot of people when they hear bottomless pit think oh he, he went down to hell well according to second edras uh five and i'll start at 23 it says, and said, O Lord, that bears rule over every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, thou, thou hast chosen the only one vine. And of all the lands of the whole world, that thou hast chosen the one pit. Okay, so a pit can be likened to a region in the earth. Okay, and this region in the earth is Europe. Okay, Europe. All right, so what's happening is. The Lord is, uh, is basically sending down the spirit, okay, to take down a particular nation. Okay, that's with the great chain in his hand. Let's look up this word for chain. Okay, in the uh, Greek. All right. Halusis. All right. A chain bound by which the body or any part of it hands feet is bound okay fetters ultimately it represents captivity okay let's see if we can go to the vines expository a chain bonds all right and what happened what was a, a very important part of history that happened at this time is that the western roman empire fell okay and that led into what is known as the dark ages okay so let's read this again and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. All right. And it's known as the bottomless pit because they lack resources. That's why they have to, uh, you know, go around, you know, uh, rape, robbing and murder, murdering and stealing the resources of others. OK, Europe is not, you know, the, that region is not the most fruitful. OK, it says the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So this angel, OK, had a great chain in his hand because what was getting ready to happen on the planet Earth is that a particular nation was getting ready to be bound. All right. And he laid hold on the dragon. All right. Now, when you go to Revelation, the 12th chapter, let's get it real quick. Who's the dragon? Who's the red dragon, as a matter of fact? OK. Revelation chapter 12 and 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads all right and this is speaking of the roman empire okay and how do we know it's speaking of the roman roman empire because as you read down okay if well first it talks about how it cast down you know the uh, the third part of the stars of heaven all right, which is ultimately Judah, Benjamin and Levi. But it also talks about how this particular red dragon tried to take the Messiah out. OK. Ultimately, as you read verse here, verse here, verse four, Revelation 12 and four and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. OK. And did cast him to the earth. 
right? The Israelites were in a low estate. They were vassals to the Roman Empire. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And that's Herod, all right, whose father was Antipater the Idumean, the Edomites, ruled that Roman Empire, okay? If you do a cross-reference, I'm pretty sure it's going to take you to Matthew when King Herod, Matthew uh, 2, all right, verse 3, uh, you can read through... 16 okay and it'll give you the history on how herod as the roman empire was ruling all right thought to slay the man child that was to be born because he understood what yahweh Shai meant he understood that there was a savior promised unto the nation of israel and i'm not going to go too deep into that breakdown but the red dragon okay is the roman empire all right, and in this chapter, all right, it, it leads to more history on when they try to actually fight against Yahweh Shai and this new revived Roman Empire, America, Babylon, the Great, the NATO, and the EU. Okay, Revelation 12 and 9, and a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. All right, and even when you go to the Vatican, the whole thing is set up as a serpent. All right. The, the word Vatican itself means uh, divining serpent. OK. Esau Edom has the spirit of the serpent in the garden. All right. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, I did a lesson. If you uh, look on my page, maybe like two to three, maybe three or four videos ago. I went into what does it mean to be cast into the earth, all right, cast from heaven. And you can get that understanding on that video, all right. This is ultimately here, speaking of Esau, Edom, you know, at the time when Yahweh Shai returns, all right, being destroyed. And there is a nation, according to Second Thessalonians, the uh, second chapter, In the ninth verse, all right, as a matter of fact, Second Thessalonians 2 and 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed. According to Malachi, the first chapter, Esau, Edom is the border of wickedness. He is the wicked. Now, there's other wicked people, all right, but he is the wicked whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. So he came on the planet Earth to do the bidding of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. Okay. So we know this is speaking of a nation of people. Okay. It's not talking about the actual spiritual demon Satan. All right. Uh, the, 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 the word devil means deceiver. And the word Satan means adversary. And that's all fulfilled in Esau Edom. Okay. So going back here. Let's read again. Revelation 20 and 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit okay and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is called the devil and satan and bound him a thousand years and what happened all right when the uh western roman empire fell that led into what the eastern roman empire coming into power which was uh led and ruled by israelites now, were they ruling in righteousness? No. Okay, but they call it the dark ages. What they tell you is that it was a period where nothing significant happened. Okay, the, 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 the Byzantine Empire. All right, and, and ironically, when you look it up, okay, why did the Byzantine Empire last so long? It says the main reason the Eastern Roman Empire lasted nearly 1,000 years after the fall of the West all right, is because it was simply impossible to breach the walls of Constantinople, and it's ultimately because of prophecy. Now, when you look it up, the Byzantine Empire lasted from 1,000 years to 1,100 years, which is directly tied to biblical prophecy, okay? Showing you that the words of the of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha are faithful and true, all right? This is Esau Edom in the planet Earth, 
all right, being taken down, all right, and cast them into the bottomless pit, all right, they were chased into the, the caves, okay, they were, they were downtrodden, and they were looked down upon, all right, it was known to stay away from these people, all right, they weren't the end thing at that time, all right, the, the black, all right, or so-called black images of the Messiah, the apostles, all right, the church fathers, all right, uh, they bowed to, you know, dark deities such as the Black Madonna. You can look all of that history up. And what I'll do is post a video after I load this one up that goes into the imagery that was going on around that time. Because I just want to get through this. So I'll just repost the video that I did on that. All right. So Satan, Esau, Edom. All right. Was bound a thousand years. Now, if you're just reading this without understanding, you're thinking. All right, that there was an actual chain put on the spiritual demon Satan. No, man, <laughs> that that doesn't make any sense. OK, he's he's walking around as a roaring lion, even to this day, seeking whom he may devour. OK, he, he, he under the authority of the most high has power to do. All right, his thing in the planet Earth. All right. Until that power is taken away. And he operates primarily through the children of Satan, which are the biblical Edomites. Okay. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. The Western Roman Empire fell until the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. After that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, when was that? That's the Renaissance period. As a matter of fact, let's get the book of Malachi, the first chapter. Okay. Where this is uh, prophesied. Salakia. Malachi, the uh, first chapter. Where this was prophesied. Malachi, chapter 1. And 1. The burden of the word of Yahweh by, uh, to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And that's going to happen when Babylon the, the Great is destroyed. All right? And a lot of our people have that mindset. How does the Lord love us, and we're in this downtrodden you know, position? Well, if you understand prophecy... Then you understand Esau was set up, all right, and we were punished, okay, but this is our final captivity, which is going to lead into our kingdom. He's the modern day Pharaoh, all right, and the Lord hates him. You have a, 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 these two individuals did a video saying, why do, why do these guys always bring out the fact that the uh, Most High hates Esau? As if it has anything to do with salvation. Well, it has everything to do with salvation because he's going to show his hate for Esau to raise up Jacob. OK, and he's going to show his hate for Esau by destroying his rulership. All right. Now it goes and jumps into prophecy here. It says, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished. All right. We will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord, they shall build. But I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people whom the Lord have indignation forever. All right. That's going to be their memorial. All right. So they did build in what? The Renaissance period. All right. And let's look up Renaissance period. OK. Let's look up the Renaissance period which happened around the 1400s. And you'll notice if you look up, you know, um, ancient, you know, art before the, uh, after the 1400s, everybody became so-called white because in the Renaissance period, what did they do? They painted over all of the images. Okay. They returned. Okay. It says the Renaissance is a period of European history marking the transition from the middle ages all right, to modern modernity and covering the 15th and 16th centuries, characterized by an effort to revive 
and surpass and surpass ideas and achievements of classical antiquity. Okay, what did they revive? All right, that Edomite, all right, Western Roman Empire started to be revived and reborn in the earth. Let's look up the definition of Renaissance. Okay, Renaissance means rebirth or revival. All right, a period of revival roughly the 1400s through the 16th century marking the transition from medieval to modern times. And that marked, all right, the rebirth of Esau Edom in the planet Earth and it's led all the way up to here. All right, from the Renaissance to now is the little season spoken of in Revelation the 20th chapter. Okay? So whereas Edom saith we are impoverished, but we will return all right, and build the desolate places. Let's look up this ter this term. All right, return. All right, in the Greek. Okay, Shabbat, to return, to turn back, to return, to come or go back. Okay, in repetition, to restore, to refresh. Okay, to bring back, to allow, to return. Okay, so Esau Edom was allowed to return into power through what is known as the Renaissance period that led to everything you see today. All right. The classics. OK, what, what, what was born back into the earth? The Roman Empire, which was the height of his power. The Western Roman Empire at that. OK. So going back to uh, Revelation, the 20th chapter. And I'm just getting through it. So let's read this again. Revelation 20 and 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. All right. Yahweh Shai having the key to the bottomless pit. All right. The, the ability to take down one nation, to give authority to another. That's all done by the Most High through Yahweh Shai and the holy angels. All right. The key of the bottomless pit. We showed you that a pit can be a region in the earth which this one is speaking of Europe in a great chain in his hand. All right. To take down a nation, to put them in captivity. And he laid hold on the dragon. All right. That uh, a Western Roman empire, that old serpent. All right. Which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. So if for a period of a thousand years, Esau, Edom was not the end thing. All right. And they like to tell you, Israelites, that you just popped up on a boat that, you know, you you, you never ran any uh, form of um, any empires outside of Africa. When it's Africa, they're, 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 they love to tell you, well, yeah, you, you were in Africa doing this and this and that. And, yeah, the Israelites were in Africa, but we had other rulerships as well. We have a very vast history. All right. And through lies and pseudoscience and, you know, um. Ultimately, Esau being the devil, he's been able to cover up particular things. All right. Well, now his narratives are being challenged. OK, now you talk about the fact that he, he has us in captivity and what he did. Well, what Esau now say. All right. Is, well, the Moors had us enslaved. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Why, why isn't that taught in the school system? Who are the Moors? All right. Israelites. All right. Who at the time that we were ruling during that a thousand year period converted to what Islam? You see, there's far more. And there's a book called Nature Knows No Color Line. All right. That goes into that history. Shows you the coat of arms and the noble so-called Negro families that were ruling during these ages. All right. And that's why the scriptures say corruption shall be overcome. But a part of this devil being loose for a little season, as we'll read in the next verse, is that he lied. He was able to deceive. OK, so that old serpent, the dragon, the devil and Satan. All right. Was bound for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him. That he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. 
and after that he must be loose to little season that is the renaissance period now what elder lahab is going into all right because one thing you have to know about this chapter is verse three must be revisited in verse seven when the thousand years are expired verse four through six are speaking of the kingdom of heaven and let's read that and i saw the thrones and they that set up on them and judgment was given unto them now what did yahweh shai tell his disciples let's get that real quick all right this is uh luke 22 and 30 all right this is yahweh shai speaking unto his disciples it says that ye may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And he's speaking to his disciples. And it's also in the book of, I believe, Matthew, the 19th chapter. Okay. Matthew 19 and uh, 28. And Yahweh Shai said unto them because peter was asking you know we've given up everything what, what are we going to get in return and yahweh shai said unto him verily i say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration all right when the son of man sit in his throne of his in the throne of his glory ye shall also sit upon the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel and it's the 12 and then the, the rest of the 144,000. All right, that's the tabernacle of David. All right, they're going to have a very important part in the rulership, the governing of the kingdom of heaven, setting everything in order. All right. Now, when you read Revelation 20 and 4, it says, And I saw the thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, all right, his disciples. All right. And in this time, some of us are going to be beheaded. We're his disciples as well. All right. The ones that were killed back then, the ones that are in this time, you know, beheaded for the word of Yahweh Shai. All right. There's a reward coming for that. All right. As it says in Revelation, the 14th chapter. All right. Blessed are those which die in Hamashiach and their works do follow them. All right. That were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. All right. Now, this word reigned. <laughs> Judgment was given unto them. All right. And they lived and reigned. The word reigned is what? Basilio. All right. You owe to be king, to exercise kingly power, to reign of a governor of a, of a province. All right. Of the rule of the Messiah. Metaphorically to exercise the highest influence to control. All right. Now. It says they reign with Hamashiach a thousand years. All right. This is what is known as the first dominion. All right. Micah 4 and 8 And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come. All right. Even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. All right. And this a thousand year period is setting everything back in order. All right. When you look at the creation story, all right, it took a period of 7,000 years. All right. When you had the 6,000 years, then you had the 7, you know, thousand of uh, rest all right seven thousand years is what it took those days of creation all right were actually thousand year periods right so when you um go into this under yahweh shai in the 144 setting everything in order it's going to take a thousand years to get everything back all right and set paradise back up on earth all right. And after that, a thousand year period, according to prophecy, Esau Edom is going to be done away with. And we have videos on that. All right. It's not that they're going to reign with him a thousand years and then that's it. All right. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is an everlasting kingdom. 
And we'll show you that. So what Lahab is saying, all right, and you have a lot of Christian pastors that teach this garbage, is that after this a thousand year period, as we'll show you, Satan or Esau is going to come back into power and and raid the land of Israel and do his his his, his wickedness. All right. So this a thousand year period is ultimately Yahweh Shai. All right, the 12 and the rest of the 144 doing what? Setting up the kingdom, putting the heathen in subjection, okay? Uh, uh, implementing the law, statutes, and commandments. And the large multitude will be set in order under them and be given their inheritance rights and everything like that. Because we're going to return to Jerusalem, okay, and do what? Part the land amongst the 12 tribes. All right. And then we're going to go throughout the four corners of the earth, dominating these heathen, getting those uh, uh, elite out of those bunkers and setting up the kingdom of heaven on earth. OK. Verse five says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. All right. And the rest of the dead are the heathen. After the 1,000 year period, they're going to be able to pretty much go into their respective lands and areas where they will be governed and ruled over and they will have to follow after the law, statutes and commandments. You have to think after the 1,000 year period, they'll know what will require because during that 1,000 year period, they're going to be beaten with a rod of iron and taught how to live righteously. All right. And then they're going to see the destruction of the biblical Edomites and then they will be able to go to their lands where they belong. OK, and they will be ruled over and they will have to pay tribute. All right. They will have to bless us. And as long as they stay on point and don't break the laws, they'll be OK. When they go off, they'll be judged. And we have various videos going into all of this. All right. That's the first resurrection. And I would love to be a part of that under Yahweh Shai directly setting up order. A first a thousand year period in the kingdom to set up paradise on earth it says blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power meaning when the missiles come all right when 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 the fire hits babylon the great all right uh, war hits the earth when the chariots return the elect all right are going to be covered they're going to be beamed up and the ones that are uh, uh you know that passed away, they'll already be up on the chariot with Yahweh Shai. The second death, which is fire, have no power over them. But they shall be priest of the Most High and shall reign with him a thousand years. All right. So ultimately what the narrative is, is that this a thousand years is it. You even have particular Israelites that say that a thousand years is it. No, the kingdom of heaven is everlasting. All right. And we'll get that. So when you get verse seven, it says, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number is whom is as the sand of the sea. And see, this is confusing because of the way it's written. All right. But really, verse four through six is speaking of a thousand year period in the kingdom. Verse one through three is speaking of history going into what happened. All right. During the Byzantine Empire and the Renaissance period where Esau was loosed. And then you jump to verse seven. And when a thousand years expire, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. That's the Renaissance and the proof. All right. Because when Yahweh Shah returns. OK, let's see what we're going to get. Let's get the book of Revelation 11. All right. Hamashiach's reign foreseen. OK. Revelation 11 and 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great no voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of the Lord and of his anointed and he shall reign forever and ever. See that he's going to reign forever and ever. Daniel the second chapter. Daniel 2 and 44 and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people as the Israelites kingdom. All right. Under the second Adam, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. 
Okay? It shall stand forever. Daniel 7 and 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominion shall serve and obey him. All right? So once Yahweh Shai comes and sets up the kingdom, that's it. Okay? This guy is teaching that when Yahweh Shai comes and sets up the kingdom, and Esau is taken down, Babylon destroyed, eventually uh, Satan, Esau, will, will, will come out of captivity and be able to overcome Yahweh Shai and the elect and Gog and Magog and all of that, which this is going into prophecy of what's going to happen when Russia, all right, Russia... All right, leads every the you know every all of a rebellion against Babylon the Great, which is going to lead ultimately to World War Three. So the thousand years expired. This in verse seven is speaking of the Renaissance period. Satan was loosed out of his prison. Esau was able to what? Be raised up into power so that his blessing could be fulfilled on the planet Earth, which is based upon deceit, the sword. Okay. So from the Renaissance period until now is his little season, which is getting ready to be ended, where he was able to rule. All right. You, you know, you, the Renaissance started at Italy. All right. And then it spread. Eventually you had the French, the Spanish, the British. Then came the 13 colonies, which are Babylon the Great, that little horn spoken of in Daniel, the seventh chapter. And then his destruction. OK, according to the book of Nahum. All right. Nahum 1 and 7, Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, Babylon the great, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do ye imagine against Yahweh? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. So Esau is not going to have another renaissance. Okay? Once Babylon the Great is destroyed and the, the, the elite flee into the bunkers, okay, they, they, as the scriptures say, we're going to visit them, okay, and take them out of the pits and put their asses into captivity. And they're going to build up, all right, them and their descendants and the, the, the other heathen, they're going to build up the kingdom of heaven. The scriptures say the sons of strangers shall build your walls, okay, under Yahweh Shai, all right, and the rest of the elect. Revelation, the second chapter, in the 26th verse. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. The nations won't have any power from this point on, especially Esau Edom. You mean to tell me Esau Edom is going to rise up out of captivity? After a thousand years of setting up the kingdom and destroy Israel. Because that's what Lahab said. The elder Lahab, he said, ultimately, Esau is going to have a rebellion against the Israelites and he's going to destroy the land of Israel because he doesn't understand prophecy. We're going to have power over the nations and we're going to rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I have received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. After that, that's it. We will never fall again. No heathen will ever raise again. Okay? So that's the understanding. All right? Let's see here. As a matter of fact, let's prove. Let's prove it. Let's keep reading. Okay? Satan freed and doomed. All right? Now, these Christians who put these precepts and things together, they get some things right, but they get a lot of things wrong. OK, they, they got some good precepts, but they don't have the, 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 the spirit. All right. Of understanding to put the pieces together, because this is a spiritual puzzle. So once Satan was loosed out of his his prison. All right. That a thousand year period, which led to the Renaissance. What would he do? He would go out and deceive the nations, which he has done. Painting over the images, lying about who, who, what nation is which. Saying he's the chosen people. Iconoclasm. 
removing landmarks and it's going to lead to world war three all right and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city and fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them and the scriptures say when the enemies shall come as a flood the lord is going to lift up a standard when that fire comes down from heaven all right nuclear war the chariots we are synonymously going to be beamed up all right because they're going to come after us and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone so there's going to be another lake of fire no this is speaking of one uh uh, uh event the return of Yahawashai and the destruction of Babylon the Great. All right, where the beast and a false prophet and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever, which is just symbolic of the fire that's coming. All right. Verse 11, and I saw a great white, white throne in him that sat on it, who's, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was no place found for them. That's Yahawashai. The one who sits on the white horse. All right. So and then the books were open. So this is all speaking of a, a different time. So you're telling me after Yahweh sets up the kingdom, he's going to have to go back into the books. OK, the book of life. No, that's not what that's talking about, man. You just don't understand that from verse 3, you jump to verse 7 and verse 4 through 5, they're speaking of different 1,000-year periods. And we have other lessons on this. I kind of skimmed through it, but um, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, I will edify it on to the next. Shalom.